Hello everybody, I am here today to show you my newest project. Jeez, I love this journal. So this, in my mind, all started off with this gorgeous Prima trim. I had a vision in my head of a journal that was a ladies journal and she had used her trim to bind it on the cover and so it basically spiraled this journal to to become what it is right now. So I, I knew that on the cover of, of my mini journal I wanted to um, have both the charms and the trim. So here we go. The trim is down here and the charm I basically stapled at the very top here. This is just a little bit of twine. I also layered up it up with doily lace, some uh, just papers that I had lying around. This is a vellum piece. This is a feather from my backyard. So it's uh, some bird donated it to this project. <laughs> And, um, and this is the back. So the back is again showing off that beautiful trim and some of my beautiful papers that are in my scrap bucket at the moment. This is what my uh, black and white journal looks like. So what I ended up doing was I printed out some black and white photos and actually let's step back a little bit. You'll see in the process video how I created the journal and then I went ahead and printed some black and white photos of my family and I wanted to have it so that the papers and the ephemera pieces were the only source of color so that it would just pop out and so you can see here that cartabella paper I have to say that yes it is the favorite of my February kit I, I just hands down it wins uh, so cartabella paper here and then the ephemera pack and then over here, once again, that border paper, I just cut it up and I layered it on here. Just a little bit of the stickers from the crepe paper sticker paper here um, with a little bit of, I think that's the, that's a tag from the ephemera pack there. And then this is the third page that I did more ephemera pieces, more black and white. I use the Tim Holtz sticker clippings and then more of the paper. That's the three pages that I did for today's video. Obviously this is a book so it's a large project but I just thought I would give you a sneak peek or like um, an idea of making a black and white ladies journal that catalogs all the beautiful people in your life for Valentine's Day. So if you want to see how I made this journal stay tuned for the process video next. So when I sat down to make this project, I had this Prima trim on my table as the inspiration. And so I grabbed this American Crafts cardstock. I knew that I was going to make a journal of some kind. So this was just sitting next to me and I thought, okay, my journal is gonna be five by seven. So I just stick it together with washi tape here as a starter, as, as a starting point. I then grabbed this book that I picked up from the thrift store and basically I just want old book pages to give that old feeling to the book. So as I said earlier, I wanted this to be a black and white ladies journal from, you know, last century. And so I thought, what would she have on demand there? She would just have old library books that she didn't want anymore as her pieces of paper. So I'm just now putting them down and cutting it down to five by seven approximately with my scissors and going against the cover. I now grab some copier paper and I just fold it in half. I have two of them here and what I'm going to be doing is gluing down book pages every other page. So here we go. I'm going to add some book pages and then white paper and then book pages and then white paper. And I've got about two signatures there. I'm now just pulling all the book pages out because I now have to cut down the folded down sh copier paper sheets to five by seven. And once again, I'm just gonna use my scissors here to be approximate. You could use your trimmer if you like.
So now that I have my signatures ready, I'm going to go ahead and stick down my book pages. And at first I'm going to use double-sided tape, but then I realize that I'm wasting my double-sided tape and then I switch over to just normal acid-free glue. So every folded A4 piece of paper is going to have two book pages to it. Okay, so here we go. I have stuck down book pages to the A4 and I'm now just going to slot them into the book and I'm going to make it so that there's going to be a blank page and a book page with every full layout that you get. The next thing I'm going to do now is I want to make sure that the book cover is going to hold. I grab this uh, painter's tape, I take off the washi and I grab this painter's tape and then I'm going to uh, flip it over and fold it one more time and then I'm going to flip it over and add the tape one more time so that it is sturdy. I like the feel of the painter tape, it feels almost like canvas. I'm now going to line up the center of the folded A4 with the center of the cardstock cover. I'm going to hold my binder clips and I'm going to grab something that just makes a hole. So I'm going to use this Tim Holtz Pokey Tool. I'm going in at a three and a half because it's seven inches high, my journal. So the half point is three and a half and I'm going to poke a hole there and then um, 0.5 or 0.75 from the bottom and the top is going to be another hole that I'm going to use my crocodile to make um, a hole. The middle hole won't be reached with the crocodile, so I just use my pokey tool to make a hole. I'm now just grabbing some twine. This is baking twine that I'm using here, and I am just going to run my needle through there and I'm going to do a pamphlet stitch and the way you do this is you insert the thread from the inside of the book to the outside. You then come up from the top and you go back into the center. You then go through the bottom hole from the outside in to the book and then one more time into the center and I usually go one more time I do it twice it might be bulky for some people but I like to do it twice just in case the first lot of string breaks for some reason so into the middle of the book now I'm gonna go around it and I'm gonna go to the outside make a knot and then back to the inside of the book where I make a knot and then cut off my thread. I then like to cover my stitching with another layer of the painter's tape. And I do the same with the inside as well. I'm just gonna get rid of that excess thread here and then I'm going to cover up the binding I do apply double-sided uh, double-sided tape because I don't want this to go anywhere. And because I folded it over, the pages are going to be kind of stuck, so I'm just using the edge of my scissors there to unstick the pages. So that is my book done. All I've got left to do really is just to trim off the overhang of the pages. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it to my guillotine and cut that down. What you can do if you don't have a guillotine is just use a steel ruler and with a craft knife you just, but this is essentially your book, your book is done. You use cardstock and copier paper and book pages to make your book. The next thing I did was I went onto my computer and I printed off some photos that are quite recent for us. The boys have just gone back to school. I took a whole lot of photos 
on that day to commemorate uh, 2018 and going back to school. I did make them black and white on purpose and I did print them in an Instax format which is approximately 1.8 inches wide by 2.4 high and then left a space when I cut them so that they were 2.1 inches wide and 3.4 inches high. I'm now just arranging them to see if I could make a story in my journal here and I'm gonna go ahead I've grabbed my little bucket of paper clips and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pin each photo to each page slowly making a story so for that first one I'm gonna have both boys for that second one 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 child and then the next child and so on and so forth All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way I want it. So we're gonna go back to uh, layout number one, which is this picture of the boys on their first day of school. They One goes to high school, one goes to lower school, uh, different, different uniforms, different schools, different routine. So on the morning of the first day of school every year, I always take this customary photo just to see the difference in height and how much they've grown since the last time I took the photo. I love how the black and white in the layout really makes the ephemera pieces of that crepe paper collection pop. I have some extra bits of paper that were left over from my last project and I'm, I'm using them. I'm sticking them behind and basically I'm just layering up behind the picture just to add a little bit of color. I don't like that big heart there. I do love the one with the arrow, so I'm gonna stick with the one with the arrow. And I'm using my PVA glue to stick it down. The next thing I do is I go through my Tim Holtz sticker clippings and I find this quote that says, if they were let to fly away, and so I thought to myself, wow, that's just a great quote. It's a good starter. So I finished it off by saying, if they were let to fly away, they would surely accomplish so much. And that's my journaling. I then realized that my papers aren't straight, so I pull that off and try to adjust it. Same with the top bit there, and I ripped my paper, but that doesn't matter, and I put it off. A little bit askew and that's my first layout done so the next one is this one here this is Zane he wanted to start riding to school this year and so we did that I love those big aviator sunglasses that he has <laughs> it's just so cute and I chose a quote here that says in my heart I know this is from Tim Holtz's clippings and then I finished it off with my journaling by saying in my heart, I know that you are destined to do great things. I don't like that the tag has a hole in it, so I cover up the hole with the sticker that says happy day. He was so happy to start school. It was a new school for him. He was just over the moon starting the school. And so I thought I would at first use this border that says, over the moon for you but I really it didn't turn out too good it was too dark for the page and I actually quite liked this quote here that says I do not know what I do without you because Zane is our little donut monster not a cookie monster a donut monster so I thought that the color pink more suited the layout I did choose to distress the edges with vintage photo and I really like the brown effect with the pink. I think it stands out really well. I also found a scrap of paper which had just some hearts in it and I thought it went well underneath the picture. I thought I was going to put that sticker there but I found a better one so I ripped it off and I put it on the right hand side and I put that other sticker up the top there. 
this video took so long to edit that I'm actually gonna break it up into two sections. So I'll see you in part two.